Welcome back to CSS for Beginners. This is video three, and what we're going to be doing in this video is we're going to be talking about how to write the actual CSS code. So in the previous video, we talked about things like, right, what is CSS and why would I use it? Uh, we then went on to talk about the importance of folder structures and how do I link my CSS file to my HTML file. So uh, like I said, in this video, we're going to literally write some CSS code and have a look at what it looks like and the different parts of CSS code. So, if I just show you this to start with, basically what I've got already is I've got a file here called index.html and inside the CSS folder I've got a text.css and this website folder here is my website. So what I'm talking about what we're going to do today is we're going to write some code in this text.css file that sets a certain style for, for example, a piece of text. We're then going to refer to that style on the index.html file and then write our content and apply the style that we're writing here to the text that appears on here. Sounds a little bit complicated, but don't worry. I've already got my files open here ready to, to use. So I've got my index.html open and my text.css. Now, before we write this CSS, I want to break it down and explain to you what the different parts of CSS code are. So, CSS will look like this, or most CSS will look like this. We'll start with a dot. Now this dot is actually very important and this dot will change later uh, depending on how we want to write our CSS. But I'm going to start by just putting some code out there and then explaining different parts. So dot title and then I've got some parentheses here. And then down here I've got closed parentheses. So these are the curly brackets on your keyboard. I open one here and I close it here. Now, don't worry too much about, whoa, he's just throwing me in the deep end here. What is he on about? I'll break it all down. Don't worry. Inside these parentheses, I'm going to write a bit of, um, a, a bit of CSS to, to make a style. Okay, again, don't worry if you're not understanding it yet. You will do shortly. Color, colon, C, 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 semicolon. Right, so what the heck have I done, you're probably thinking. Well, let me explain it a little bit. So first of all, you can see that I've wrote something called dot .title. Basically, dot .title is, um, let's say it's like a label. It's labeling a style. So it's saying, right, I've got this style called title. And that title has got certain properties. So for example, it's got a color. And that color, for example, is gray in this case and I'm going to set that title label here with these properties and values so if I ever refer to the style called title and if I apply the title style to a piece of text then that text will have the color gray okay does that make sense well, it will do in just a minute, so don't worry. So I wanted to tell you about, well, what are these actually really called? I call this a label. Is it called a label? Well, it's not actually. Uh, dot title here. All, all your CSS code will look similar to this, and it will all, all have a very similar syntax. So this dot title we call a selector. So this is a selector. And all our CSS styles will start with a selector. We then call these parentheses things here a declaration which is me basically saying, right, I'm about to declare a style for that selector. So whatever appears, whatever appears in between these parentheses here, that is called a declaration. Declaration. Oops. Um, and then I mentioned this color, and this color is what we call a property. This is a property of this selector. Notice that the property has um, a word, it might have some words, but there'll never be spaces in between these words, uh, a word and it always ends with a colon and that is really important. So the green bit is a property and a property must always end with a colon. And then what follows the property is some what we call a value. So we give a value to the property and the value always ends with a semicolon. The value always ends with a semicolon. 
And that is CSS, that's the syntax, that's how we write it. We have a selector, we have a declaration, and inside that declaration we have properties and we have values. So this selector called title has the property of color, and that color has a value of gray. Now this gray here, we've used something called a hexadecimal color. If you're not quite sure what that is, basically there's different ways of referencing colors. So every color's got a unique um, way of referring to it. So we don't just say red, there's different shades of red. And there's different ways of referencing certain colors. So for example, you can have Pantone colors, you can have RGB colors. On the web, we tend to use, or we do use, hexadecimal colors. And again, I'm not going to go into detail about it, but if you want to type in hexadecimal, let me just spell that for you here, Da, 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 da. Hexi, hexi decimal. If you type in hexadecimal colors um, in Google, it'll come up with all the different colors that you can use, all the different codes for certain colors and what those colors are. Oh, I've also noticed uh, how I've spelt color. Although Tim Berners Lee came up with uh, HTML and Tim Berners Lee is British, he actually wrote the syntax in um, the American way of spelling words. So from the UK, if we write the word colour, we tend to have a U in it. Don't use a U in it because it won't work. Okay, so colour doesn't have a U. Again, you probably still sat there thinking, what is he on about? I have no idea what this is. Right, so let's go and put it into practice, okay? So what I'm going to do is simply, um, I'm going to write what I've just showed you there in my CSS file. So I go over to my web development software, Dreamweaver. This is my text.css file, and I'm just going to write just see a minute, a little bit for you. I'm going to write in here uh, what I've just written. So I wrote top dot title. Um, by the way, dot title space. I then open the parenthesis, and you know, I've just got this way of doing things. But if I open these parentheses, I'll just press enter a few times, and then I'll close them. Just a little bit more here. Um, and then inside this parenthesis, so this is my selector and this is my declaration. And inside my declaration, I'm going to have a property of color. And color is a property which always ends, a property always ends with a colon. Now, Dreamweaver is really cool for writing code and it prompts me with, okay, what color do you want? I can click on here, for example, and go and choose my colors and it writes the hexadecimal number for me. So for example, if I wanted this red, that's the hexadecimal number for that red. I'm just going to keep it simple and use the one that um, I wrote previously, which was CC, CC, CC. And it doesn't matter whether these are in capitals or not. Um, that would be exactly the same as writing. And in fact, without complicating things, it would actually also be the same as writing that. But I don't want to confuse you too much. So CC, CC, CC. So that's my value. And remember, a value is never finished unless you write a semicolon. Now, a lot of people, when they start writing these styles, they don't work first time. And that's probably the most common mistake, forgetting to put this colon here and this semicolon here, and also forgetting to close the declaration. So make sure the syntax is like this. You have a property, it finishes with a colon. You have a value, it finishes with a semicolon. The declaration must be opened and it must be closed. The title, the selector, the selector, this title here, I started it with a full stop. Later on, we're going to talk about how that might change. But for now, it must have a full stop. Okay, so I've written my very first style using CSS, and I'm going to save it. Now, that's not it, because I've, I've created a style, and now what I need to do is use that style. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into my index.html, I've split my screen here so you can see my code um, and you can see what it would actually look like. Now again, we're not going to go into too much detail about HTML, but basically when you create a website, um, these body tags are very important here. This body tag says, right, I'm about to put some content on my website and whatever appears between me and me uh, will appear on the website. Notice that this tag is just the word body and this tag has the word body but with a slash before it which means to close that tag that's going to be quite important in a minute when we write our um, HTML to reference the CSS so 
Again, if I haven't explained that very well, let me just explain it a little bit better. So for example, if I go onto Google, this here is the body. So all of this space here is the body. Okay, this little bit here is called a title. And whatever I write in my body of my HTML will appear on this part of my uh, web page. So, zoom in a little bit. Not too much. There we go. Oops. So, I've got a style in my text.css. The section the selector is called title. I'm going to write some words here in the body. Hello, world. If I click here, look, this is my body. This is my body. And those words appear on the body. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to apply this style, color of gray, to this piece of text here. All right, and the way I do it, there's several ways of doing it, but I'm going to show you the way where all I'm going to do is apply the style to these two words. All right, you'll understand what I mean by that in a minute. To do that, I'm doing that less than symbol, and then I'm going to write the word span, space, class, equals, open quotes, and then in Dreamweaver, very nicely, look, the selector pops up because it's referenced my text.css. So I can just click on that. Don't worry if you can't. I've just written the word title in quotes. And then I do a more than symbol. Now, notice that Dreamweaver is really nice because, again, it's put it in a color. So this is a piece of HTML. Anything that's in blue is HTML. Anything in black is actually just text that will appear on my screen. Um, you'll notice here, look, that all of a sudden that's turned black. And the reason for that is because there's a mistake in my code. And that mistake is that I've opened this span, but I never closed it. So here I'm going to go less than, slash, and close the span. Now if I click here, you can see that this is blue with HTML. This is black, so it's content. And this is blue. And you'll see that my text here is now gray. That's because span class means right. Whatever appears between this tag and this closed span tag set with the style of title, which I've declared here. So notice when I declare it, I put a dot. That will change later. We'll talk about that. And when I refer to it, I don't put the dot. So again, why do this? Let's just recap why we do this. Because imagine if I build 100 pages and all the text that I've written is gray like this. And then the guy who I'm building the website for comes to me and says, oh, the website looks great, but I don't want any of the text gray. If you didn't use CSS, you'd have to go into every page and change all the text to the color that he did want. With this method, what you can do, as long as I've referenced the style sheet on every page with this bit of code here, he might come to me and say, oh, I want it orange. I want all the text orange. So you go, okay, text.css, find out what the hexadecimal color is, uh, F-F-C-C-O-O, -O, that's orange, I think. Find out what the hexadecimal color is for orange. Just change one piece of code here, save it, and then if that style sheet is applied to all of your 100 pages and you've referred to the style title for all of your text, go back and now your text is orange. So the style that I apply here and write in my CSS, I've now applied it um, to, to this piece of text by doing a span. There are other ways that I can do it. I'm not going to overcomplicate things. I'm just going to keep it simple for now. But if I then start writing some text here, for example, this is my website, you'll notice that because this piece of text does not appear within the span, it's black and it's Times New Roman, whereas this is orange from Times New Roman because orange is the color I've applied to the title selector. What we're going to be talking about in the next video is we're going to be talking about well, what other properties can I apply to it. For example, I can do font size. And I can say, right, well, I want the font size to be 34 pixels. Don't worry about this. We're going to break this down even more later on. Save that. So now everything that has a span class of title will be the color orange and the font size 34. Let's go and check it. There we go. That's the font size 34. Um, and this obviously hasn't got the span attached to it, so that just stays as time as we run. So there we go. We've written our first piece of CSS, and we've referred to that CSS uh, in our HTML as well. Like I said, in the next video, what we're going to do is we're going to have a look uh, a little bit more about the properties 
um, that we can apply to certain selectors.